Hello, we are live. It is Tuesday, and um, I was testing my cameras again. <laughs> so we're live today on YouTube, uh, inside the EPP Society Facebook group, and also on the English Paper Piecing Facebook page. So I'm just going to jump on our uh, inside the Facebook group and on the Facebook page just to make sure that we're streaming okay. And then I see some of you are here already. Uh, if you can see me, and he uh, see me and hear me, okay, not see me, uh, let me know in the comments. I see a thumbs up. So that's good. That means that something's coming through. Let me just click on this. Click it a click. Let's see. So on the English paper piecing page, let me go ahead and refresh that real quick. Let's see. Remind me this afternoon. Hi, Lori. Uh, I see Lori's here on YouTube. And Nias is joining us on YouTube. Yes, and please do introduce yourselves and share where you are joining us from. Oh, my braid is coming all undone. Oh, okay, so I see myself on the English paper piecing page. And Rose from Victoria, Texas is joining us from Facebook. Hello! Oh no, what's the sad face, Nancy? What's going on? Oh no. Uh, but thumbs up at the same time. So I'm a little confused. <laughs> and Robin's here from uh, Williamsburg. And Tony's joining us today from Buffalo. Love it. And let me just check on the uh, Facebook Society, ESPP Society Facebook group. Oh, Facebook's been like super duper slow. So let me check really quick. It's super laggy. Let me see here. And we have Rhonda's joining us from Charleston. Hi, Rhonda. How's everybody doing? Are you all ready for fall? Like, uh, we have a few more days left of September and then we're officially in October. So that means it's fall, right? Officially. Oh, exciting. Okay, so I know events turn up kind of funky inside the Facebook groups. Let's, let me refresh real quick for folks that can't find us so I can help direct them here. We're on Earth. There we are. Hello. Oh, everybody. Oh, you won't let me type. Am I frozen? No. Join us live now. Okay. Whoopsie daisy. Okay, it is a little slow, but it, I am showing up everywhere where I should be showing up. So that's a good thing. Ah, uh, let's see here. Uh huh. Oh. Oh, you're still on the warm and humid side. It's been dropping. Like temperature has been dropping. It. We're supposed to be ninety something here today, but in the morning and evenings, it's super nice and cool. It's a little chilly, so I had to wear like sweatpants and sweatshirts. <laughs> Sweatshirt weather. Woohoo! Exciting. All right, and uh, as usual, if uh, if it's this if this is your first time joining us on the broadcast, what you want to go ahead and do is give Ecam Live permission for me to see your name, especially inside the Facebook group on the Facebook page. You're fine, so I'm gonna go ahead and repost the comment to give Ecam Live permission for me to see your name. You just click on the link, just say yes, and then you can come back. No problemo. And then you just need to do this once and then you're good. Uh, it might be once per group that you're in, but for our group, yeah, it's just once and then that's fine. Otherwise, I won't be able to see your name. Uh, yes. <gasps> Laura said, it became fall a couple of days ago. I'm not ready for it. Never am as I hate what comes next. No. <laughs> Blurk. <laughs> but you know, uh, they do, yeah, they did. What was it? The Farmer's Almanac? They said that we're supposed to have a lot of snow this year. Is that is that the overall general consensus? I'm not sure. <laughs> That's what Tony said too. Fall just means the snow is on its way. Well, at least it's not like snow for like six months like it is out in like Europe, right? In like Sweden. Oh, that was cold and dark and depressing. 
Uh, and Katrine, hello. So glad you're here. Yay. Oh, thank you for helping out in the comments section with all our other uh, Dutch speakers. Yay. I had no idea what was going on, so I had to hit uh, Google Translate. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, oh, still in the 70s. Oh, that's, that's like the perfect weather. I wish it was 70s year round. 70, 75. I'll be happy as a clam. Christine, hello from Sacramento. Yay. Okay, so um, so if you guys saw the topic of today's live, remember uh, last week we said I'm going to give all the folks that are doing the linear quilt a few weeks break so that you can make some blocks before we actually go into assembling each of the rows, right? So I don't want to stress everyone out. I know I realized so long go so fast. And everyone has a life beyond the soul lungs, right? So I just want to give folks a little breather that are doing the big quilts so that they have a little time to catch up and make some more blocks so that they can start to kind of play with the layout and how they want to assemble. And I got a coloring sheet ready for them as well. And um, so we're going to talk about Halloween projects today, in particular the coffin template. It's a little morose, but I mean, it depends on how you look at it. It doesn't have to remind you of a coffin, right? M reminds me of those uh, old Western movies where they would have a... W what's the guy's name that was that was taking like people's measurements before the uh, gun duels or whatever they're called? And he would... Uh, is caretaker? Is that what he was called? Where he would be in like the black uh, uh, top hat and he'd come and measure them to measure their coffin size. <laughs> That's what the that's what these remind me of. But so this is the four inch size that I've got here for you. So I'm gonna switch to the overhead camera so we can kind of talk about what you can do with these that don't have to be all like gloom and doom. But it's kind of fun piece to play with, especially around Halloween and year round too, if you want to. And let's cross our fingers. Undertaker, yes. <laughs> That's what they're called. Yes, yes. Nancy got it too. Oh, yeah. And Tony got it too. Oh, my gosh. So let me switch. Let's see. Oh, I'm crossing my fingers. Uh, which one did I want? This one. <gasps> oh, it's working. <laughs> yes. Okay. So this, this means it's going to be a good day. When all the tech's working, that's a fabulous day. So remember, I showed this one in the EPP Society group. You might have seen this on my Instagram feed as well. These are the two inch pieces. And the way that these are measured is super easy. Nothing complicated. Uh, see, ruler, it's good. As, as you can see, there are two inches tall from top to bottom, like so. Yeah, I had someone order two inch templates from my shop on Etsy and then they were not happy that they were two inch that they were too small and I said hmm wish they would have asked me how big are the two inch well they're two inches tall so now you know so two inches tall they're not going to be any bigger than two inches coffin petals yes Nancy I mean like it could be super cute right imagine like this you could have, uh, you could fussy cut something in the center, do an embroidery piece or something. And I actually, um, for the photos I shared, let's see. I thought it would be fun to fussy cut around something bigger, a bigger print like this. Uh, we could perhaps put that in the center, see? And I could um, applique this by hand or by machine on top. And it'll be a fun little Halloween project, right? So we do, I have to admit, I do enjoy like smaller projects because I can take them from start to finish and not have them end up of my on my um, never-ending work-in-progress pile, right? And plus, uh, Halloween's like, what, a month away little over a month away so we want to have something smaller that we can do and then these would be great for like a little halloween party or like a maybe a little table um what's it called a little coaster maybe for your candy bowl yes yes that would be super fun right so yeah you can definitely fussy cut around you can and um just applique these on top of something and make it cute uh, like that would be cute 
because these prints are super big and these are all art gallery fabrics. This one is from their um, Sweet and Spookier collection right there. And, and these are their solids, uh, AGF Pure Solids. And you can get the Pure Solids from um, Jen at um, Red Thread Studios. She has uh, AGF Solids of the Month. It's awesome. You can get fat quarter or half yard bundles. Ta -da! And she's in Florida. Yay! So let me show you the different sizes. So I put the link to um, the sh my shop too, where we have all the paper templates for you if you're interested in getting them for Halloween here. So like I said, these are the two inch pieces. Oh, look, they look super cute all stacked up. Let me organize it so you can see. And they go up in increments of half inch. So I got my two inch. Two and a half. Three and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half and five. And I can't remember who I chatted with. She's going to make um, a bunting out of the five inch pieces. I can't wait to see. Are you here today? Oh, hi, Susan. I would love to. Oh, move it up to the cauldron skeleton. Oh, was there a cauldron skeleton, Nancy? Oh, this one. Yes. Like so. Oh, that would be su super cute, Nancy. Yeah. That would be super cute. <gasps> then I would get a skeleton, the cauldron, and a ghost. Triple whammy. Oh, the little, um, like a pet cemetery. Oh, did you guys see the pet cemetery movie? That was like traumatizing. Oh. Like that. So lots of opportunities for fuzzy cutting. Remember, these are the two inch. So that's where you would get a smaller area to, um, Highlight in the center. If you go with the bigger pieces, obviously you could do a bigger focus focal focal print in the center there. Um, so someone's doing the uh, Halloween bunting with the five inch pieces. I'm dying to see if you are here. I would love for you. I hope you do share inside the um, Facebook group too. That would be awesome. So these are some that I made uh, with. These are the four inch pieces. So four inch. Four inches tall, okay, from top to bottom. And just like the two inch, you can lay these out to make a wreath, kind of, uh, yeah, like uh, Nancy said, coffin wreath or coffin flower. Remove these. Ooh. I got like coffins all over. Let me stack these on top. The two inch came, came together really fast. And same with the four inch. I want to try the five inch. I'm kind of looking to see what Halloween fabric I could tweak those into something fun. And obviously this is going to turn into a mug rug. Okay. You all know how much I love a mug rug. <laughs> uh, yay. Oh, hello lady. Who is that? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, let me check. Oh, it's, it's, oh, wait. No, I don't see. Uh, let me know who it is. Because <laughs> right now I just see. Hello, lady. Finally made it to your live. Hello. And my Facebook is really slow. So it's lagging a little bit. So then you got the um, four inch pieces here. And let me show you that you could do it the wreath style like this one. If you want to, you don't have to. Obviously, this is not for everyone. And then I know so I think I saw someone that was doing a like a table runner, which I'm kind of dying to see when it's all done too. So these you can go ahead and lay them out and they'll all fit together like this into rows. And you'll notice the top and the bottom, they'll snap together. So if I take this one and flip it, there we go. So these will all fit together, which is nice because you don't have to worry about any little tails sticking out. And it's just 
nice easy project especially if you're kind of wanting to move on from hexagons and you want to try something a little different but you don't want to deal with little tails sticking out everywhere then this is a good shape to play with especially for halloween so highly recommend it's kind of addicting too and if you got lots of fun halloween fabric use it don't just let it sit because i have halloween collection from like oh i would say uh three four years ago and i kind of i grew it and now i don't find it as exciting so might as well use your fabric when you have it and you're excited about having it right so start cutting into it and turn it into a fun project so this is an option you can do right super fun uh, uh let's see so nancy said is that pdf file no these are in the etsy shop these are all paper cut pieces in the epp club all the members have um PDF, uh, PDF files in different sizes that they can download and cut, print and cut by hand with scissors. And they've also got the SVG file, so they can even go beyond these sizes here. Uh, one good thing with SVG files is, is that you can upscale or downscale any shape to any size that you want. I mean, the possibilities are endless versus a PDF, you're kind of stuck with the shapes that you have unless you use the rescaling format, right, on your... Um, printer but that's a big old hassle so if you do have a print a cutting machine like a cricket have we unboxed all our crickets yet or do we still have folks that have them in the boxes mm -hmm. so you can use svg files for cricket brother scan and cut and silhouette so remember silhouette the base um, software it, you can't import svg files but so you would have to purchase the um designer edition or i would move up to the business if you can if you have the budget for it that way you can access all the svg files and it's much easier to work with the base software on the silhouette the only yeah the only drawback is that you can't import silhouette uh, svg files which is kind of dumb to be honest but it's a i think the software itself is so much superior to the cricut design space oh Cricut Design Space gives me white hairs, but that's <laughs> that that's story for another day, right? But yeah, the one pro with Cricut Design Space is that even on the free version of the software, I don't think they have any paid versions, right? Except for getting um, access to their files, is that you can import SVG files. So these are super fun. And yeah, lots of people ask, can I use uh, Cricut I mean, the silhouette design space to design files or size them up and down and then um, use my Cricut to cut and go, yeah. Because you would just export the S SVG files into your Cricut design software and start cutting them. So they work really well hand in hand. So as you can see, I'm a silhouette user. And I would design or lay out my shapes in Silhouette um, Studio. And then for testing to make sure that all my members especially in the epp club the majority of them have crickets i bring, import the svg files into um, cricket design space to make sure that the files show up okay because that's when it starts turning really weird sometimes so i double check on both softwares that they're working okay and then it's ready to go so that's how i test too and so this is one way that you could lay out the coffins, right? And you can make a table runner. Or if you don't even want to make that many, you could just lay a few out, right? Just do half. Let's see. Let's like do a half circle. Three, four, five, six. So seven makes a half circle and 14 will make a full circle. Like so. Let's squeeze another one in here. Make sure I am on, still on camera. my friend how are you <laughs> wait are the kids in school uh, are they back in school yet they are right yes uh, 
And Tony asked, do you have a center for the different sizes? This one does not have a center because it was just a um, piece that was requested by the EPP club members that they wanted a coffin shape in their template library. So we don't have a center yet. But let me know if you do want a center because we could always make that happen, right? <laughs> that was so funny. Oh, they are in school. Yay! And we have another Facebook user. Hello. I can't see who it is. Uh, please give Ecamm's permission to see your name so I can see who's joining. Would love that. Uh, Nancy said no cricket here. So yeah, Tony, remind me if the center is something that you would want. So I don't forget. Uh, Let's see here. Nancy, it's totally fine if you don't have a cricket. Yeah, PDFs work super fine too. And yeah, you have access to the PDF files. Let's see here. I think I got all the questions. Yeah. So for those of you that don't like smaller pieces, obviously, right? Work with the bigger pieces. Have some fun with it. And I'm kind of looking forward to seeing all the fun um, Halloween projects. So these are all from AGF. Where did I, I know I like I have all my seasonal fabric in one box. So I can try to like go through it. But what I am looking for, I don't know if anyone's seen it this year. I am looking for like glow in the dark fabric. So if you have seen it somewhere, please do let me know. I got some pieces a few, quite a few years back and they're glow in the dark, but I haven't used those yet because I only, I only have a limited amount, but I think if I could find more, I would want to turn it into like a glow in the dark project. It's like you could hang something with this, with glow in the dark fabric on your door, right? For Halloween. Halloween wreath. Uh, yes. Yeah. So PDF, you just use, just print it out and cut it out with your paper scissors. And I still do still. I mean, it's, it's kind of like um, therapeutic to just print out a sh page of templates and sit and cut while watching a, something on Netflix, right? Yeah, it's relaxing. Uh, wait, Joanne has glow in the dark fabrics. I have not been to Joanne's in like a year or so. It's been a while. <gasps> uh oh, maybe I need to go check it out. Oh, Tony has a great suggestion: quilted and glow in the dark thread. I got glow in the dark embroidery thread. I don't. I don't think I ever bought any glow in the dark thread thread. Ooh. <gasps> Wait. Ooh or boo? I like them in rows. <laughs> Oh, so I can't. Oh, then I want to go check out Joanne's. That's exciting. Was there? Was it by their like? Um, did they have like it in a separate? Um, what what do you call it? A uh, seasonal section or just mixed in with their other quilting fabrics? So I like them in rows. Like this, right? Where they all just snap together. And quick tip. Just in case you didn't know, you can just fill this in with the half hexagon. Dun dun. <gasps> Bum -ba -dum. Let me show you. So these are the four inch sizes. Five. Not four. Four. Nope. Good lord. We're too many templates. There we go. So if you want to fill in the gaps, let's do this. Can you see what I'm doing? Okay. Sometimes I get too excited and then I fall off of camera. I'm just going to cut that. And then you can just fill in this gap. And then you have a row of coffins. Woohoo! Exciting. 
and then you have this extra piece. So I would just cut the half hexagon instead. Uh, oh, Nancy, that's really good. Yeah, especially for winter, right? I bought uh, my little dogs. There's like this little flashlight that you can put on their collars. And then you just turn on when you walk them. So it blinks. Kind of like uh, bicyclists have on their outfits. And um, in Europe, because it gets so dark in the winter, kids wear little reflectors that you just uh, pin onto your clothes that swing when you walk so that the cars can kind of see that the kids are walking in the dark because it's so dark. <laughs> Maybe we just needed more street lights. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was in seasonal. Okay, that's awesome. Oh, you found some for your long arm? So what, like 40 weight or 50 weight? Which company is it by, Tony? It's not Orifil, right? I haven't seen Orifil with um, glow in the dark thread. Yes, glow in the dark is so fun. I wish I could find some. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, they're indoor cats. Oh, I see a lot more people. Nancy, I see a lot, a lot of people walking their cats uh, with leash, a, like a dog leash kind of thing. You know, the body one. I don't know how effective that is or how much the cats like it. But and then I see a lot of um, uh, cats in strollers lately, too. Their owners walk them in their strollers. Uh, oh, it's not Orifil. Yeah, if you ever find out, if you have time to look and see which brand it is, that would be super cool. Oh, I think a lot of us in the EPP Society will be excited for some glow-in-the-dark thread. And um, the glow-in-the-dark embroidery thread that I found, that was, I found that at Hobby Lobby. They had that in the uh, in, with the embroidery floss. So that was super fun. But um, I didn't see it year-round. They might still have it. So I would go check if you're into glow-in-the-dark stuff. And then I noticed some uh, glow-in-the-dark products. They're not quite as glowy in the darkiness <laughs> as others. Um, so you can kind of like, um, what I would do is just kind of cover your hands over the product and see if it glows because it should have absorbed the light from the surrounding lights, right? And if it doesn't glow that much, then it's probably not going to be that great. But the embroidery thread I found it it like glows like crazy, and it was uh it wasn't a name brand or anything. I think it might even have been um Hobby Lobby's own brand. Whatever that's called, I always forget. <laughs> oh, your cats will not take that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm wondering how cats really feel about being in a dog leash kind of situation and Katrine says I think I will have to pull Leo my cat over the street he will not move the Katrine has the cutest cats oh my god that's so funny oh so um Katrine speaking of uh speaking of um seeing you this Thursday uh, and for all our other EPP club members too, we have our social hours this Thursday. The link to register for the Zoom calls will come. Uh, I'll be emailing those later today. And anyone here that's not in the EPP club, if you're interested in joining us, make sure to uh, DM me, message me for more information or for a link to join. And let's see. Oh, Christine said Amazon has some glow in the dark thread. Oh. And Laura said, I'm thinking Sulky thread might have the glow in the dark thread. Oh, Sulky, Sulky. Okay, I should write that down. Sulky thread. I'm going to go check out Amazon and Sulky. Oh, and check out Joanne's for glow in the dark fabrics. Right. Uh. Ooh. Floria. And Wonderful both have glow in the dark thread. Oh, red rock threads. Oh, thanks for sharing, Margaret. Margaret. Uh, red rock threads.com. And 
And that was... Oh, what was it? Oh, Wonderful. Oh. See, the things you learn when you ask, right? Um... Ooh, who's this? Ooh, coffins. I have eight rows done now on my coffin quilt. I'm on track to finish by Halloween. Ooh, exciting. Wait, let me see if I... If it'll let me see. Who is this? Who this? Who this? Boo. <laughs> who's who's making the um coffin quilt? Do share. Let's see. And Margaret said, it's Floria. Okay, Floria and Wonderful both have glow-in-the-dark thread. Awesome. Thank you, Margaret. <laughs> Jennifer Fulmer, I'm a ghost. Yes, you are. <laughs> we don't see your name. It's so fitting for Halloween, right? Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yeah, and uh, if you guys have seen some fu new fun Halloween collections too, I would love to see that as well. I think this is uh, Art Gallery's collection from last year. Last year or year before? I'm not even sure. I don't think it says the year on the collection here. And I believe they still carry it. And then I think they came out with something new too. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Floriani, I'm being defeated by autocorrect. You know, Margaret, sometimes autocorrect just gets the best of us, right? Okay. Floriani, thank you. And the Tiny Frights. Ooh, who's that collection by? Is that AGF too or someone else? Tiny Frights. Man, now I'm going to have to like check out all these fabrics. Tiny frights. Because there is still time to get new fabric for Halloween. Yes? Yes. Love it. A ruby star. Cool. Ruby star. So from Moda. Okay. I think the quilt shop around me. Yeah. The closest, closest one locally to me. They, they carry a lot of Moda. So maybe I just go and peek in there. See if they have it. Oh, exciting. And like I said, if you're okay with hexes, you're new to EPP, these pieces are super easy too. There's no tails to uh, worry about. So you can see kind of my basting order here. What did I do? Uh, let me write that out. So we did... It looks like I went clockwise. That's good if you can see. Oh, no. So I did my sides, short sides, long side, bottom, and then top last. So you don't really need to worry about a particular order on these because there's not going to be any tail sticking out no matter whether you go clockwise, counterclockwise, or random. It's your choice. And it super easy just think of it as a stretched out hexagon piece right so a hexagon would be right and about there's or so like that so you're super good and I'm kind of looking forward to seeing more coffin pieces and works here in the group too uh, let's see here No, don't share that. <laughs> and there's a super cute gnome line with gnomes in costumes that fit perfect in a coffin. God dang it. Oh, well, but I'm saving up to buy some super cute um Japanese collections coming in November. That's kind of what I'm holding out for. But yeah, some fun Halloween fabric would definitely not, you know, it would not hurt, right? Late to the party. You're fashionably late, Lizzie. So good to have you here. So we've just been talking about coffins today and how we can just lay them out in rows. Like so. Oh, weren't you doing uh, something with coffins, Lucy? Or you can do like a little wreath like this. So lots of fun options. Let me see...
And if there's any questions, now is the perfect time to ask. Oh, yeah. And um, if you find that as you're sewing and you're pricking your fingers... You can I, I think I've got a permanent hole here after a little while because I was sewing too much. Remember, my favorite tape is this one. Next Care by 3M. Most um, uh, drugstores, Target, Walmart. Walmart doesn't carry, they carry their own weird brand. It's not good i tried it no next care is far superior to the walmart brand because the walmart brand is not flexible like this i tried it and it's super stiff so this one can you see this it has a slight sheen to it it's kind of it's a little foamy see how thick can you see the thickness right there so it's not thin like other medical tape tape so it has a little cushiony effect to it because it has a little thickness. And it's super easy. And see how it stretches like this? It has a little give, which is nice. So I just cut a little piece like that. And then I know that's the spot where the needle will hit. And so I'll tape my finger right there. And because it has a slight uh, little rubbery... Um, or latexy, I guess, texture, rubbery texture, I would say. You get a really nice grip. So I just put one on my either index or thumb. So I get a nice grip when I pull my needle through. So you're not gripping as hard. So you actually end up using, you get less fatigue here in this muscle from, see how like you don't have to push as hard to get, get your needle when, when you're pulling it through. Cause you get this really, really nice grip because of the texture and then I'll just wear like these all day they don't fall off and then if you find that you're getting still getting through here just double it up so then you got double the thickness because I don't know I try thimbles all the time but either they fall off they're too tight or too loose or my fingers just don't like thimbles and they just kick them off <laughs> But this stays put and it's nice. And you can just shape it to your finger size, you know. And because it's a little stretchy. And then when you're done, just toss it and then cut a new piece for next time. So next care from 3M. It's like 3 or $4, I think. Yeah. Super economical too. And this lasts me a long time. Oh yeah, maybe this would even help if you have um, those uh, thimbles, but they fall off. It might be nice to just put some put put a little piece on your finger and then put the thimble because it has the little grippy texture, right? Maybe it'll hold on to your um, silicone thimbles too. I don't know. I just can't make them work for some reason. Uh, ooh. So Lucy bought cute Halloween fabric, cut my coffin pieces, and lost my mojo on this. Ah, this will rejuvenate you. Yes, I hope it does. I think I it kind of helps to see for me too to see other folks working on this shape and you you know making something fun with um halloween fabrics kind of makes me excited and makes me want to do it more too so you're not just making your own project in a vac vacuum right which is nice to have the um facebook group as for like motivation and inspiration the skeleton upside down was bothering me so i had to turn it right side up yes susan yeah definitely try it from the pharmacy i'm sure they have it and if they don't then you can find it on amazon like laura said they always have it there yeah, see? Lucy agrees too. Love next care tape. So much better than thimbles. Ah. 
right? Yeah, we don't want fingers on our, I mean, holes on our fingers. We don't, we want fingers on our hands, but we don't want holes on our fingers. And then I think that's uh, prevalent for a lot of um, hand piecing folks. With what, any kind of, you know, embroidery, uh, cross stitch, if you have that same spot where the needle hits for some reason, it hurts after a while too. And then you start peeling, right? And then you get raw and it's like, ugh. And then you can't sew and then it makes you sad. So yeah, just slap some tape on it. Super useful. Uh, and this, is there a pattern for this? I love the coffins. You know, you don't need a pattern. You just need 14 pieces to make a wreath like so. Or just unlimited pieces and you can just keep on adding them like this. Super easy. And you would just keep on adding those into rows like this and they all snap together. So super uh, beginner friendly project. And even for experienced DPPers, it's just nice and relaxing. And it's a fun Halloween project, right? And remember I said you can fill in the top and bottoms with half hexes. So you get nice squared off um, sides and then you can keep on building. Uh... And I put the link um, to my shop if you want to grab the templates from me. There's other places that um, sell them too. So you have lots of options. If you're in the EPP club, you do have access to all the PDFs and SVGs. So you can cut them on your own machine or cut them by hand. Let's see. Here. Um, I don't see any questions. I think everyone's good for this, right? Oh, what size are they? So this one... Two inches, two inch, two inch coffins. And the way we measure the size, um, way, the way I measure the size, just from top to bottom, two inches. And these here are four inches, so double the size. And in the shop, we have from two up to five inches. And now I kind of want to make, I, who is it? I have to look at who, someone's making the bunting with the five inch. So these are five inches tall, top to bottom. And it'd be so fun, right? So you would just double up front and back. Let me show like this. And then you can have them going going along with the thread and then hang them up as a bunting for Halloween. How fun is that? Oh, we have a beginner. Yes, we love beginners. Yes, but so for this one, you wouldn't really need a pattern. You can just keep on adding on your each row of coffins, like so. Or like I said, just sew them two by two, two, sew two together at a time, and then just keep on adding until you have a full wreath here. Ta-da! And if you have any more questions, yeah, ask in the, um, are you on the, are you joining us from the EPP Society group or are you on my English Paper Piecing page? That way we can all help you out. And everybody in the EPP Society is super helpful. So if you're in there already, you are you have a head start already. And then just put any questions you have under the video here and I'll be hopping back in later this afternoon to check it out and see if there's any questions. Uh... Also, Margaret asked, what size half hex, oh, wait, what size half hexy matches up, for instance, the four inch size? Well, let's see here. So this is a four inch. Uh, so you would need, so based, obviously, if you have the S, if you're in the EPP club and you are in the, um, you have the SVG files, it would be easy for you to just cut the same size hexagons. These are about, ooh, actually, let me measure it on the paper. So they're not like an even sized hexagon. So that might be a little tricky. So these are about, oh, oh, one and a half. You could do with one and a half inch hexagons. Hope that helps. Ta da! So this is, oh no, that's the four and a half. I lied, hold on. Where's my four inch? Oh, so this is the four inch. Good thing I checked, Nancy. Oh my gosh. So this is the four inch hexagon, I mean, uh, coffin. Let's see, and you would need a half hexagon that is 
one and ooh, one, two, three, four, about one and five sixteenths, which is an odd size, right? So if you have the hexagon here, I would just trace the top and the bottom or just cut one and then you can trace it onto paper. Oops. And if you have the SVG files, you can just cut a hexagon that's the same size. Let's see. Ooh, okay. So someone went and posted a pic of mine in progress in the group. Oh, I can't wait to see. Um, let's see. Oh, and Susan's working on her hugs and kisses quilt. Fun. Exciting. And I think I got all the uh, questions and comments here. If I missed anything, just tag me again in the um, group. And if you're on the e English Paper Piecing page, come join us inside the English Paper Piecing Society, uh, which is... Um, is it maybe good if I put the link here? It is here. Let me put that here real quick. Dash Society. That should work. So that way you can come join us inside the EPP Society. Um, yeah, if you're on YouTube too. That's the place where you want to come and hang out with all the other EPP lovers. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you're making with your coffin pieces. And I shall go and pick out some more from my fabric. And I'm going to go check out all these spots for glow-in-the-dark fabric and glow-in-the-dark thread. <laughs> kind of excited. Oh! And last chance before I jump off. Any questions? Let's see. Oh, I wish Facebook wasn't so painfully slow so I could see what... People are commenting from there. And I think that's it. All right. So I will see you all next week. And I'll hope to see you inside the EPP Society Facebook group. And I can't wait to see your coffin project for Halloween. Or other Halloween projects too. If there's anyone making the web maker, please tag me too. I can't wait to see. I will see y'all next week.